Welcome to the dive into darkness, the plunge into the unknown, an exploration of Roblox's most closeted corners. Welcome to a basement in an empty college building, but what we're here to talk about is the Roblox community's newest fascination with virtual modeling, otherwise known as Uncanny Valley. Talk about this recently blew up on YouTube about these hyper-realistic, grossly over-exaggerated Roblox characters showing women and men with as many human body details as you could fit onto a walking canvas. What seemed to surprise everyone was how strange and how widespread this type of behavior had been existing for so long. Where did it come from? Why is it here? Can it be stopped? Let's try to open up the box and get to the bottom of this movement. When we take the lid off the box and start with Roblox, it perhaps all begins with the fashion groups that go back years on the site. Maybe not even groups, like what was Kestrel clothing back in the day, for example, besides this cutting edge for fashion? A lot of people wanted to chase a higher form of style. They wanted the Aeropostels and the American Eagles and the Abercrombie and Fitches from reality in Roblox. Teenagers running around the mall wanted to look the same way in game. You're no doubt aware that there is big business in Roblox clothing and an even bigger deal about dressing up nicely for some people. For typical guys that spend 90% of their time in battle and action games, not so much. But there was always one side of the player base that was obsessed with fashion. And soon this emphasis on dressing up carried into real games. Runway places like Roblox's top model, I'd say late 2014, was a turning point when character customization became a real focus for lots of teen girls, some teen boys. The 2015 Winter Games even included that model place, so the admins recognized that fashion was a common habit for its audience to participate in. From that prototype, dozens of other runways and groups came after. And at first there was just the dressing up going on, but like all forms of art, it eventually evolves. It tries to take itself more seriously, it thinks it can't do better. And little by little there was this transition where the clothing designers and creators got more detailed, the models got more showy and robust, really there was this revolution in what's best. All the way down to using 3.0 body types, it was like the person who imitated real life the most came out on top. The first signs of Uncanny Valley on Roblox weren't coming from nowhere. What these fashion group leaders and designers were doing were pulling pages from popular culture and trying to stick those aspects into the game to add their pieces to the box. Fashion magazines, music videos from the hottest artists, imitating all the flair and the glitziness of a real-life celebrity. What was becoming the standard in Roblox was already the standard of real life, and players wanted to copy that essence as closely as possible. Imitation was the highest form of flattery. So now we dig a little deeper into the box and ask where did it all go so wrong? For the past couple minutes I've been talking about the boring old history, right? Uncanny Valley, as the other big YouTubers focused in on it, is mostly taking place on Twitter or Instagram, where these everyday Roblox fashionistas have been mutated into these flamboyant celebrities. They're sort of like these twisted and suggestive models posing together in junk. It's so strange that you can make a video that fringes on clickbait about it, as viewers pour in to hear how you trash it. And if you make it a sponsor video or a series of them, you can make money off the whole thing. It's crazy! The initial reaction to Uncanny Valley has just been a bunch of fighting between people because the popular YouTubers pointed them out, but it's more important to analyze how these people came to be. Just from the few profiles I glanced at to make this video, I saw the, yes, the twig-bodied, huge face models that are pretty bizarre. But why go through the trouble to be such wannabes? I said before that these fashion-crazy players take pages from popular culture, and here it's no different. From all the posts about music videos and album covers, to these random snapshots being made in studio, every aspect of Uncanny Valley culture is like trying to be the ideal virtual celebrity. There's trends that I see like this type of imitation billboard chart where you're supposed to like or retweet a post to say that you purchased a music video on Spotify or iTunes or something. Okay, that's a bit of a stretch. But what you do see is this ambition to live like a celebrity, the emphasis to move in the same way in an animation as the actual artist did in their music video. It's scary to admit, but there's a frightening amount of effort 
put into this type of performance and art, not just the models. There is undeniably a lot of effort put into this when it's all one big fake popularity contest to see which model gets the most attention. I think to myself just how insane it is that people can look at these figures moving and sitting around and say that it's faithful to the human body. They're obviously trying to run with the whole sex sells philosophy that yes, we know real life musicians use, but why go through the trouble of copying every single aspect of their mannerisms in a website for all ages? Is it supposed to be a really elaborate way to play pretend and roleplay, or is it something else? What I don't think most people realize is that wherever you go, there's always a deviant culture out there online. We don't stop to think that this has been occurring elsewhere for ages. In any medium, games especially, there are teens trying to mimic what their role models are doing. In IMVU, in Second Life, I mean, the ads for the 3D chat rooms that you see scattered around the internet have literally been on Candy Valley for even more years. Of the hundreds of thousands of pretenders, some may have actually recognized the potential for Roblox to be this sort of freeform chat room where they can have limitless ways to portray their character and style. Now with the ways that you can make your model increasingly more human, I'm afraid it was only a matter of time before this site fit the bill for these types of people. And can we reliably stop it? Most likely not, since while there's nothing against the law about album cover parodies with uncanny models, if, god forbid, these humanoids are being posed and animated to do anything explicit, the Roblox moderation team still can't reliably stretch out to find them because its population still is relatively small and smart, knowing how to dodge moderation across all these different types of sites. As far as I know, the Roblox mods don't concern themselves with following leads on Twitter and Instagram. And the problem with this platform is that it allows any type of person that wants to create an odd behavior or a degenerate activity like an open source in Roblox Studio, because as long as it's contained there and there isn't a community around to report it, it goes on. What does the presence of these people mean for updates like the Anthro update and the user-generated catalog? After all, from what the developers conference told us, these updates are coming one after the other. When Uncanny Valley gets its hands on the Anthro update, no doubt they will find satisfaction in making their characters even more human like their idols. No doubt the content creators will want to create meshes and retextures of long, realistic hair, or even put a price tag on their eyeshadowed faces. They might even jump on the opportunity to make their game pay to win, almost like a social ladder. Only those who can afford the best designer wear are the likeliest to succeed in these circles. Now, Uncanny Valley can't be the only reason why these two updates are killed off, because there's still a minority being blown out of proportion by major YouTubers revolting against it in mass. But the admins need to keep it in mind. If they give an inch, the people wanting to make their characters fit their desires will take a mile. The one mistake the people opposed to Uncanny Valley are making is going out and harassing them and thinking that's going to change something. I mean, these folks honestly can't help themselves. These types of behaviors are picked up by being surrounded by fashion and the typical teen dreams in everyday life. The Nicki Minaj playlist and a jewel case iPhone following the top 100 artists on social media? They're literally being molded into wanting to be like the stars, and they're taking that attitude into a virtual world. This lifestyle is so drilled and hardwired into their brains that I'm pretty sure that edgy meme lords dropping reaction images and replies to their posts isn't going to cure them, nor do I think any sort of problem should be handled by rating. Though what we do have right now is a mess. Uncanny Valley is this mixture of popular culture and modern entertainment trying to survive on Roblox assets and stumbling around like a Frankenstein monster. It's going to become an unmovable piece of this game due to the freedom these people have to power their imaginations. And if you're like me though, who is confused considerably about what's being witnessed now, seeing the culmination of years of experience in a site that's supposed to be for all ages and turn out this way, and asking how in the world we failed, simply close the box. Put it somewhere you'll forget about, and climb out of Uncanny Valley. That does it for this discussion video, and your feedback is always welcome, but for now though, thank you for taking the time to watch, and I hope to see you again soon.